Hello, good afternoon Year 6 and welcome to today's session where we're going to be looking at the units of measurement for electrical power. Now then, just as a quick recap, okay, the next two or three slides are all about information I've already talked about. It's a quick refresher, but if you need even more, go back and watch a previous video or look at your previous work, okay? Now remember, electricity is a natural force and we harness it for our needs. I know two types of electricity, there's current and static. Now, this is an atom, okay, and you can see inside the atom, I have got here my neutron, okay, which is neutral, it is not positively or negatively charged. I have got my protons, which are positively charged, and orbiting around them, like planets around the sun, I have got my electrons, which are negatively charged. And we're going to be looking a little bit more at current electricity. This is one that travels. Again, this is described as flowing electrons moving from one atom to another. Those negative electrons moving from one to another. Okay, This type of electricity, this current electricity, is what powers our homes, from the lights to the television. Okay, And this is another one that was taken from your work last week. This is one of the paragraphs that was in your reading comprehension, where we talked about amperes, we talked about volts, uh, we talked about ohms, watts. Again, if you need any recap, go back and reread that information sheet from last week. Okay, It tells you a little bit more about these things. But that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So let's have a little look first at volts. Now, these are all units of measurement for different parts of the electrical process. Okay, So volts, or V for short, okay? volts is a force that makes electricity move. Now, I've got a little analogy here for you which basically might make it easier for you to understand. So imagine a garden hose, okay? You've got a garden hose and you're, you're watering your garden, okay? So imagine you've got that hose and you let go of it so no water is coming out. Now, even if you aren't spraying anything with water, the pressure behind it is still there. So as soon as you turn it on, it, that force will start pushing it, okay? And it's still there. Now, volts, that's what volts measures. So in the electrical concept, when we're actually talking about electricity and volts, okay, if you switch off a light, the voltage is still inside the circuit waiting for it to be completed. So as soon as that circuit's complete, you turn it on, okay, the force will push the electrons across and we measure this force in volts, okay? So volts measure the force that make electricity move. We've got ampere which is amps, okay? Now, amps is a measurement of the flow of electrical current inside a circuit. So it's that measurement of the flow of electric, uh, electricity, okay? Again, imagine a garden hose. Imagine this way. When that garden hose is off, the water is still inside. So like electricity, like electrons, okay? When the light is turned off, the current is still sitting there. It's not disappeared. It's not just suddenly gone away somewhere. The electrons and the electricity is still waiting inside, okay? So amps measure the flow. It measures the number of electrons that go through the circuit, okay? And we measure that in amps. We've also got ohms. Now, ohms measure the resistance. Again, putting it into a garden hose context, okay? Imagine it this way. Um, even if someone steps on your hose, or if you bend your hose, okay? then it's restricted, it's got a resistance, and that will slow the flow of water. If you bend the hose, less water will be able to come out because it's got a sort of a rubber neck, it's got to get through there, okay? And it's the same with electricity, okay, on a circuit. The less resistance that there is, the quicker the electrons can travel around. But the more resistance there is, maybe with extra wire, or um, many, many other sort of different ways of creating resistance, okay? Um, the less resistance there is, the quicker the electrons can flow. The more resistance, the slower that they will flow. And we measure this resistance in ohms, okay? And it's even got its own special little symbol. So ohms measures the resistance. So to recap, in electrical circuits, we use volts to measure the force that makes electricity move. We use amps to measure the electrical currents that flows through the circuit. And we use ohms to measure the amount of resistance. And the final one we're going to look at is watts. And this is what your work is based around today. Now, watts is the power used by a circuit. 
So again, imagine your garden hose, but now imagine you're filling up a bucket. Now, this is a measurement of how quickly the bucket is filling up, okay? How much water is needed to fill that bucket up and how quickly it is happening. So in an electrical point of view, okay, an electrical concept, the more wattage, the more power it uses. And we're gonna be investigating that today. So all of the electrical appliances in our home have a wattage. The higher the wattage, the more power is needed to make it work, to use it, okay? Okay, and the uh, wattage of the appliance tells how much power is needed to operate it. So the more wattage, the more power it needs to be used. So in simple form, appliances that are loud, hot, bright, or move more, usually require more energy. They require more watts to work, okay? So if you think about something like your Wi-Fi router, it doesn't, it's not really loud, it doesn't get hot, it doesn't heat anything up, it's not bright, it doesn't move, it just sends out little signals. So it's probably not going to use a lot of watts. Whereas something like your washing machine, for example, would use a lot more because it's got a lot of movement, okay, and it's got a lot of different processes going on. So you're going to be comparing um, different appliances around your house and ordering them into what you think uses sort of 10 watts all the way up to the thousands. That's your first task today. So task one is compare different appliances and order them, okay, into what you think uses the least amount of watts to the most amount of watts. You can cut it out and stick it in order, or very simply, you could write down the number and the appliance next to it. You need to send your answers to me. When you've done that, you can then move on to task two. Task two is a circuit building online. Now, there's a little demonstration which I've put in part two. There's a second video. So when you finish this video, complete task one, then go and watch video number two, and then complete task two. Okay, yes, fix. So have a wonderful session. We're gonna be looking at what's today. If you need any help, send me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Goodbye.